This next nigun comes from Slavita, which is a town, and it's famous for a printing press, the famous Slavita printing press. There's a whole backstory, actually, how the permit was originally procured. It was a miracle from the Alter Rebbe. Hmm. Um, a story for another time. Right. But the printing press was run, originally was founded by Reb Moshe Shapiro, who was the Rav of Slavita, and who was the son of Reb Pinchas Koretzer, who was a disciple of the Baal Shem Tov and Mizr Right. Now, this Reb Moshe then had two sons who took over the printing press from him, and uh, the, the Shapiro brothers, Reb Shmuel Avram Abo and Reb Pinchas. Reb Pinchas was named for his Zaydi, Reb Pinchas Koretze. Now, we know there was a little bit of a controversy at those times regarding the printing press in Vilna and the printing press in Slavita, and however it happened, there was some type of a libel. They were convicted and they were sentenced to a terrible inhuman punishment, a brutal punishment, which is known as running the gauntlet. You have soldiers, rows of soldiers on either side, and they're holding weapons, clubs, and sticks, and each of the brothers would have to go in between these rows of soldiers, and they were braced into some type of a contraption, like a harness or something, so they couldn't bend over, they couldn't cover themselves, they basically just held still, and the, the harness would be pulled through at a slow pace, so they couldn't, they couldn't speed it up. They would just have to absorb these blows from, from the soldiers. So they brought the first brother through, the older brother, Reb Pinchas, and uh, it was there, and then back, and then one more time again, three times through the gauntlet. And after he was finished, he was unconscious, and they, they hospitalized him. And uh, then the next brother came through, the, the younger brother, Reb Shmuel Avram Abba. So, as I was saying, they're, they're being brought with this contraption. There are people on either side of them sort of like pulling this harness or this brace. And at one point, they sensed they couldn't pull him any further. Reb Shmuel Avim Abba had dug in his heels and he stopped himself. He put on the brakes. He wouldn't let them pull him any further. Why not? His yarmulke fell off of his head. Now, obviously, in, in Jewish law, to save a life, I mean, everything is pushed off except for three cardinal sins. But on the level of piety and spiritual sensitivity of, of, of Reb Shmuel Avram Abba, he, he wouldn't walk one step without his head covered. So he, he wouldn't move until finally somebody picked up the yarmulke and they put it back on his head and then he allowed himself to continue to be brought through the gauntlet. At any rate, as they were enduring this unthinkable brutality, they were able mentally, emotionally to, to, to endure by transporting themselves, I guess, into a sort of like a trance-like state by singing this nigun. Oh, yeah, mama. 
Yeah, I'm a man. 